Mr. Nova Scotia Know-It-All answers your questions about things unique to your province. And this week, a visit to one of the last family-owned water-powered sawmills, a proud piece of our industrial past. Now, Mr. Nova Scotia know-it-all, Bruce Nunn. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, Don. Some sounds of big saw blades we just heard there, along with the song of the fiddle. <laughs> so where is this old sawmill you're taking us to this morning? Don, it's in a remote settlement. It's deep in the woods, and I think it's still deep in the past in some ways. I, I was invited to go and visit the mill. And it's just like a Norman Rockwell kind of painting. If you can picture it, a big, rambling, faded gray wooden building, thick, thick wooden beams all covered in sawdust inside. Uh, it's built over a small river amid spruce trees all around and surrounded by farmland. It's uh, still operating. It's still standing where it stood since 1815, including being burnt and rebuilt and started and stopped a couple times. But it's, uh, it's in a little, little middle settlement called Matty Settlement. Uh, it, it's near the border of Antigonish and Guysborough County. Never uh, heard of it. Yeah, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's a little out of the way. Uh, gravel roads drive up from the old highway that cuts through the uh, Acadian village of Tracady. Uh, the sawmill is its a real trip back in the past. The Nova Scotia Museum of Industry suspects this old-style mill is the oldest perhaps the oldest still operating mill of its type, at least in Nova Scotia. You mentioned it was family owned. Which family? Well, in the very early days, it was run by the Matties. Uh, later, in, it was owned by a Mr. Summers, but the DeCoste family has been running it almost 70 years, since 1944. Dennis DeCoste bought and rebuilt this sawmill, and he built it from the ruins of a fire in 43. And, and he had the dam and, and the water wheel there still. There was some old iron equipment still left over, usable. And he had some more metal gears and cogs made in New Glasgow, and he got it going. So he was a, at the time, he was a lobster fisherman and a lumberman, but he became a mill operator, uh, making uh, things like wooden shingles in a big, dusty old mill. It's powered by a water wheel that he says reached a force of 40 horsepower. And so the big blade there, Don and Mr. DeCoast, have worked very hard all of his life. Now, what kind of wooden products were they turning out at the mill? Well, at first, uh, Dennis DeCoste and his brother, Benedict, they made wooden shingles, as I said, but later the mill was adapted uh, by Benedict to cut lumber, uh, and it still does today. Uh, the water wheel mechanism needs replacing, however, so it's, it's been running off a tractor motor for the last year. But Dennis DeCoste remembers the earliest years of water power. Don, he's, eight, he's 90 years old right now. He's been married 61 years to his wife, Ella. Dennis and I talked at their kitchen table just down the lane from the old sawmill, and Dennis quite happily remembered his busiest days at his sawmill. We saw 10,000 shingles a day. I had a man cutting the logs into blocks at the, that were the length of the shingles, 16 inches long, and I had a man packing them into bundles, and I sold the... I think it was a dollar a bundle. Buck a bundle. Buck a bundle. Should have bought some of those earlier. <laughs> who supplied the wood for all the shingle making? Well, Dennis' suppliers was just about anybody who had a wood lot in the area, someone trying to turn out some extra bucks from their land. Farmers from around all the way, all the way to Anganish, possibly. But they hauled in their logs in long lengths, and we put them on the logway. They rolled them down to the saw. I had a big circular saw that sliced them. He sliced and he cut them down. The wooden shingles were sold all over the area for building houses and barns. And this was, of course, before vinyl siding. Uh, and his sawmill was a real going concern. A homegrown, hands-on business. Was making shingles enough, though, to make a living for Mr. DeCoste in those days? Well, back then, of course, living off the land, you had to be very resourceful. He was one of those guys. Mr. DeCoste went lumbering when the mill wasn't operating. Uh, in fact, he said that some of the trees that he had cut down and shipped out were actually used for special wooden panels on wartime airplanes. They needed to make spruce plywood panels that wouldn't shatter when hit by bullets. Um, that's one claim to fame he has. He, he also scraped up money to buy unwanted woodlots, and he made slow gains in land. And 
he was an innovative fellow. He talked about having only a grade eight education, but he, uh, in building the sawmill, he had to learn ratios and he had to learn all the science of, of water pressure. And uh, he even constructed what he calls a hammer mill. A hammer mill was a system of hammers that uh, even made flour. People sold uh, a little bit of uh, wheat and they come to me and I'd grind it into a coarse flour. They made biscuits with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, today we call Mr. Koska what, a multitasker. That's right. <laughs> you saw the sawmill is still running. What's going on there? Uh, what was going on there when you stopped by? Well, the mill was running. Uh, Dennis's nephew, Bernie DeCoste, is, is still serving the local woodlot owners, cutting up lumber. Um, he was using some equipment. It's about 80 years old. Uh, he was running log chunks through the teeth of this huge spinning metal blade. Uh, and down the line, his uh, 11-year-old grandson, Mitchell Spears, was there fourth generation in this sawmill family. He was down the line grabbing the pieces and moving them along and really just enjoying the work. Well, it feels kind of fun uh, because uh, it's kind of historic, you know, like it's not that uh, often that you get to work in a mill. It's this old. So, pretty fun when you get to hear the saw. It's great. Really, really great. Okay, get back to work. Wow. Young Mitchell. Guys, having fun <laughs> having fun and making a buck, eh? That's right. Sounds like you might want to take over the family business someday. <laughs> yeah, you, you never know. He actually said to me, Don, uh, it'll either be the sawmill or maybe go into computers. So, yeah. <laughs> you can do both. Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, computer-aided, uh, water-powered uh, mills. Well, it's it's all getting that old. It's still going. And Dennis DeCoste, uh, he told me that uh, he's grateful to his people like his brother Benedict, uh, his nephew there, his sons, all those people through the years who came along and advanced the mill a little bit with their ingenuity and their efforts. Uh, Dennis has seen a lot of changes and he says he's learned a lot and he feels good about it all. I've been through a lot of those things with uh, a lot of men that were better than I was, but it was, they learned you something, I think. Something to pass on, yeah. I'm quite proud of the family that we brought up and it's been a good life. It's a wonderful story. And that sums it all a up. Wonderful sentiment there, too, yes. from Mr. DeCoste. Thank you very much, Bruce. Okay, Don. Good to see you. See you next week. See you next week. Bruce Nunn is Mr. Nova Scotia Know-It-All. Now, if you would like to see pictures of that old Nova Scotia sawmill, just go to our website at novascotia.com.